Hey, what's up, users? This is John at muse for you here to help you build awesome websites without code. And yesterday, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Um, there was an update to Adobe Muse. It came out July 20th, and yesterday I released a video um, about the update. There weren't any release notes at the moment uh, when I made the video, uh, but Adobe Muse just released uh, the release notes with uh, more of a description of what the update contains. Um, so I'll just go ahead and read through the updates and uh, hopefully this will solve some issues that you might have been having since the new 2015.2 release. Um, so here are the fixes. Um, I'll just go through them in order. Uh, the first one, it says, uh, while loading some sites containing certain combinations of custom HTML or third-party widgets, the browser shows an error message that begins JavaScript exception error calling selector function. Uh, so if you're seeing this error, this has now been fixed in this July 20th uh, update. Uh, composition triggers can be horizontally misaligned on export if they have different stroke weights across states. Uh, selecting undo after resizing the width of, of a page in design mode can cause a crash with the error message unknown BP type. Moving an object within the layers panel also moves the, the object vertically on the page. Widgets with page pinned triggers with different styling and their normal and active states look misaligned when published. Moving the breakpoints bar after creating a hyperlink, resizing the page width, and then undoing can cause Muse to crash. Uh, if the network connection is interrupted while publishing, Muse will crash with the error message sitefile.getbinary content called before sitefile.write to stream. Uh, the next one, a, site page, a site's pages can look incorrect in the browser if different breakpoints have different sticky footer set settings. Muse can crash when moving the breakpoints bar in design mode on a page containing a 100% width rectangle and a larger image on top of it. Some users with Business Catalyst sites don't have access to their sites. Uh, the next one, publishing a site to Business Catalyst on a Mac whose language setting in the system preferences is set to Hebrew causes a crash. Uh, the next one, uh, choosing collect all assets from the assets panel in a site with missing CC libraries, assets causes a crash. Uh, an extra slash appear. This is the next one here. Uh, an extra slash appears after the domain name when publishing a site to Business Catalyst with custom domains. Uh, the publish to Business Catalyst dialog has incorrect string translations for the Russian language on Windows. Uh, sites published on Business Catalyst with a with .oam animations cannot be edited with in-browser editing. The next one here, fixed width high DPI sites with placed images are exporting at 1.5 times expected size and report incorrect dimensions in the assets panel. Uh, here, Muse shortcuts are missing from the programs menu after upgrading to Muse 2015.2 on Windows. Uh, so that's quite a few updates and we can see that the Adobe Muse team is really working hard uh, to make sure that Adobe Muse works well uh, across the board, uh, whether you're working with uh, responsive sites or fluid with sites or adaptive design. Um, I myself as well have been working on uh, quite a few updates to the widgets. If you're part of the muse for You subscription um, at Muse4USHop.com, then you have been seeing quite a bit, quite a bit of updates uh, because I do want to make sure that my widgets work really well for you. Um, I will say one thing, you do want to keep it simple on mobile. I know there are a lot of great widgets in my shop and they can really add a lot of uh, great visual effects. But for mobile, I will say keep it simple. Um, many times when somebody's on a mobile device, they're not really looking to see all these flashy effects. They just want to get the information quickly on a mobile device. Um, so if you are adding any effects to mobile, I'd say keep it minimal. And um, it just makes for, you know, for an easier navigation when somebody's, you know, on their mobile device and they're swiping or touching, they're not really distracted by all of these effects. On desktop, it works great because it's easier to navigate and the user has more time to kind of see the effects and there's a bigger screen uh, to see all, all of the effects. Again, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can subscribe below. And also in the show more section are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. Uh, yeah, so again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.